how tough is John Feliciano? That injury report came out. He's a, he's a tough he's a tough SOB. Well, and that's what gets me, right? I think they would have found that rotator cuff injury sooner if he was pitching against the Astros. <laughs> Look so excited to talk about this. I'm distinguished. For those of you who are looking to win autographed Bills merch, hit up the. That's Sabres. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah! It's an autographed Trey White goalie academy helmet. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> but so, I don't know how to do promos. <laughs> go down into the description. There's a link to enter for the autographed Trey White goalie academy uh, goalie helmet. Go down, get into. There's only a few days left. Uh, the winning, or the winner is going to be drawn uh, the day of the Pro Bowl at yeah. kickoff. So get in now. The only thing you're only ever going to see this once. It's a one of a kind item. The Bills are not making this. The Sabers are not making this. Trey White had never seen one when he had him sign it before. So this is a unique item. You want to get your hands on it? Go enter now. It's free to enter. Here's what gets me right. People are freaking out about the fact that the Bills had players who were injured and required surgery. I, Eric Wood was a sneeze away from being paralyzed, and we didn't find that out till January. the end of the season. Yeah. I think they overestimate how thoroughly these guys are checked throughout the season. Yes. And the reason is, if you go looking for something, we talked about this when Josh Allen hurt his elbow. Mm -hmm. When you go looking for something, you're gonna the risk is always there that you're gonna find something that you weren't looking for. Exactly. Right? Yeah. The, let's just be real about player injuries in the NFL. If they don't say it hurts, it's because it must not hurt that bad. No. Right? These guys are taught to ignore pain. They really are from a from a youth football perspective. Rub some dirt on it. If you yeah, exactly. That's it. Like walk it off. I broke my hand, walk it off. Pour some Robitussin on it. I don't know what to tell you. You didn't break your foot. <laughs> Absolutely. You are you are shamed into ignoring ignoring pain if you want to play if you yeah. want to play the game when you're out there you just have to deal with whatever's whatever's thrown at you yes it's part of the culture of the game i'm not saying whether that's right or wrong i'm just saying that's what it is can the bills get in trouble for not disclosing stuff so he had a torn rotator cuff yeah and i don't remember him listed on any injury reports i mean last play of the game man was passionate <laughs> i don't know that's amazing Tearing a rotator cuff is typically not a slow, winding injury. Yeah. It, it can be, but it's typically not. No. Either way, Feliciano has a torn rotator cuff. There are three bills that went in for surgery, like, as soon as the season was over. So he's, he's out four to six months. Does that switch the pathway to the Buffalo Bills? You remember, he was one of their first signings for the offensive line. He communicated OG Bobby Johnson's message across the line along with Morse. He stepped in at center. He's a very valuable piece to your team. Most of his contract is guaranteed. I think like 70% of his contract is guaranteed. Does that switch the Buffalo Bills' focus of what they do in the offseason as far as the, the linemen? The line I don't know, because you got Bates who can play guard. I mean, you got you got some guys that are already on the team that you can kind of hold over for that guard position. So no. I'm not really, I don't really think so. You know who else can play guard? Cody Ford. Cody Ford. You know who else can play dark card? Wait, time out before you go. That's not a knock. We're right. knocking him. No, okay, I think that's a good point to bring up. Because people are like, well, you uh, no. No, he can play guard. He's in. He'd be a very effective guard for you. If you wanted to start in a second court, Cody Ford could be a very effective guard for you. Is he at the level of, of player that Feliciano is? No. No, but a lot of that's knowledge. Knowledge the upside is, is greater than Feliciano. Uh, that I agree with, yes. Okay. The injuries. Let me get. Let me get this. Um, Oliver, with a hernia. Oh God, that's horrible, man. You had a hernia before? No, I've never had a hernia, but I can tell you that. Do you have a hernia? Yes. Arrives at my in my driveway at seven thirty every Saturday. <laughs> you son of a uh, what I can tell you about hernia surgery is that. Um, <laughs> That was twice as funny. I'm sorry. Anytime there's a core level injury, right? You're looking at tons, tons of rehab time. Mm -hmm. Any mm -hmm. core level injury. Um, 
now hernia, they, I mean, they've, they've done a pretty good job with procedures where it's not as bad as it used to be. Um, but hernias are no joke. But that, I mean, that hernia, that could have been something that he's had forever. Yeah. Right? There's, there's guys that have hernias that are functional for years. And then they finally get to the NFL. And he's like, hey, whenever I laugh, this ball pops out of my stomach. I don't know why. They're like, oh, gee. <laughs> Let's take a look at that. It turns out it's a hernia. But Whoops. again, not something that the team would even want to pay if it's not impacting his play. Uh-huh. The team doesn't want to know about it. Because no. here's what happens. We've seen the opposite side where Tom Brady's listed on the injury report for 17 weeks with a shoulder injury and he's fine. Right? Didn't have surgery in the offseason. So there's a line between just listing everybody on the injury report yeah. and then the team just not, the players not telling you about injuries. Yeah. Right? If Oliver's played with this for the last three years, this is just as normal, then what does he care? Yeah. At the end of the year physical, they're checking him out. They probably did an x ray and they're like, okay, that's not normal. He's like, well, it's been there for years, so I don't know what to tell you. Hmm. How long is the recovery time for her? Uh, it depends on the location, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't a sports hernia. Well, I, I'm just saying, just for as far as Feliciano and Oliver are concerned, just saying that Feliciano, they say four to six months. Okay, hernia recovery time as per Google, one to two weeks. Okay, so so it's more about, about Feliciano than, than Oliver because Oliver, we said, listen, these rookies that come in. Not until their second year can you really start grading. Because right. I agree with that. They had their combine, everything. We talked about that all the time. So this is his first off season mm-hmm. to get ready. He knows what he's asked to do. Right. He knows his position. Um, he's going to get another year under his belt. Who knows whether or not he goes up to 300 or stays where he is, and they, and they move him around the line. Who knows? Uh, that's fine. But as far as Feliciano goes... Mm-hmm. You got a guy who was your starting guard all 16 games. Yep. Who, when your starting center went down and you paid $44 million for it, mm-hmm. he stepped into that role. That's not a guy you replace with one player. Right. So, mm-hmm. are they going to be patient with his recovery time, knowing that camp's the first time he's going to be able to work out or do anything? Right. I mean, he could work out his legs, I guess. Well, I mean, but, look at what they did with Morris. Right, Morris wasn't ready to go. Yeah, and he, but there's a difference between an incumbent player and a newly acquired player. Well, Feliciano came into 2019 like he was an incumbent because he knew the offense. Right. He knew like the calls and everything. Well, so. he knew he knew OG Bobby Johnson how he wanted to do business. So you're right, he came in like an incumbent. But th- thank God Feliciano was there because he made the transition for Morris that much easier. He did. What I'm saying now is that so whoever you bring in is going to get more snaps than Feliciano, unless they are world beaters, I can't imagine them taking Feliciano's job. No, I'm not talking about taking his job. I'm just talking about having Feliciano for the 2020 season. Yeah. At guard. Um, but it does, I mean, he will have all the verbiage down. So if he comes back in July, it's not like going to be like he's behind the eight ball. He's right. going to know what he's doing. It's just getting his physical, uh, his body ready for the right. season. Well, also. especially everything's going to be, everything's going to stay status quo just as long as Brian Dable's your offensive coordinator. Yes, that's very true. So if that's Brian what Dable's the consistency still, brings you. Right, yeah, exactly. So uh, if Dable's still your coordinator, then everything's gravy for him. But does this, does this open a door for, for uh, Ford? Does it open a door for Ford? Ford just had shoulder surgery. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, they're both, they're both in slings right now. Cody Ford also had shoulder surgery. So we're talking about, well, Ford can move down to guard. Now, mind you, Ford did not have a, a rotator cuff repair, which is a significantly larger injury. Ford yeah. went in and had a cleanup done of his shoulder. I mean, in three weeks, he's going to be fine. Well, yeah. So, so we're so not got talking Bates. the same thing. We got Bates, and then you talk about Feliciano and Ford surgeries. Mm-hmm. Does this increase what the Bills might have to pay for Quentin Spain? Tough, That's right? interesting. Yeah. So does it bring the urgency? Does Ford? I know it's other side of the line. No, I but you're not. Over. No, but you're not wrong there. So does the Ford and Feliciano injuries impact the necessity to bring Spain back? Is what you're saying? Or long? Is long than a two year? Spencer Long? Yeah. I thought so. Okay. So I might be wrong on that. But it's 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 something to talk about. If you have Ford and Feliciano, Feliciano doesn't come back till July projected. If right. it's the six months, Ford. 
few weeks, but he's got to rehab that and everything that goes on. Plus, he's your tackle. Right. I understand that. He's a guy that we say could play guard if you needed him to if Feliciano's out. Right, but any injury across the offensive line impacts the rest of the offensive line. Let's, yeah. I mean, just being realistic Quentin about Spain that. playing 100% of the snaps, not giving up a sack per PFF. Right. Um, I always love just saying that per PFF, just see what your reaction is sometimes. Yeah, sure. That all being said, does, does that increase your, your need to sign Quentin Spain? I think... You well, might play on the other side of the line. I think it's a necessity. You can't lose all those guys. Okay, so I know this, the no sacks per stat thing for Spain is important, right? I know people talk about that. I do. It's a it's a it's a stat people talk about. Um, I'm not a believer there, right? Because let's be real. If you want to beat Quentin Spain, you run around him. You don't run through him. And you can't so, run. <laughs> it's hard to run around Quentin Spain. There's a lot of man there. Um, how fast do you run the mile? That's about how long it would take you to run around Spain. <laughs> Please don't kill me. Mr. Spain. <laughs> I beg you. Like a Maytag rolling down. <laughs>